Hi guys, this is Starla with The Handmade Alphas, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create beautiful marketing photos without having to pay for a designer or pay for any stock photos or pay with or pay for Photoshop. So this is all going to be 100% free that anybody can do from home. One thing I will say is that if you have not watched my iPicky training series, that is going to be an essential piece of this puzzle, along with my marketing scene creator video. So all of those are going to be linked below in a playlist. If you have not watched any of that series, you definitely need to go watch that first. And yes, it's going to be a little bit time consuming, but trust me, if you really want to master photos like the ones that I'm showing you right now, it is absolutely essential to go through and watch all of those videos from beginning to end. That way you kind of have a grip on the website that we're going to be using today to edit your photos. All right, guys, so all of the photos that we are going to be editing today for your marketing are going to be through iPicky.com, of course, and this is a free website. You do not need to download anything. You literally just get on iPicky.com. If you follow my iPicky training series, though, you probably already know that. So to start, though, um, what I first recommend you doing is, as you've learned in the Marketing Scene Creator, um, and in my past iPicky training videos, you should really have a base for, you know, product photos, photos that you've already taken of your product on white and black backgrounds for marketing, um, depending on the product and the angle that you're trying to do. So, so for example, I took this photo over a black piece of construction paper. Um, this is one of the main photos that we're going to be using today. And then I have another one and these are both keys, uh, for my upcoming collection on November 2nd. So while I am, you know, kind of showing you guys how to create these awesome marketing photos, um, you can also watch me create photos that I will be using in my own marketing. Um, but keep in mind that you have to be flexible with this and make it work for you. So much of what you learn in the marketing scene creator, you can actually use to create your marketing photos. Like for example, I did this photo in a marketing scene creator, and this was a fantastic spring marketing photo. So um, honestly, you can totally just rely on that marketing scene creator video to create photos like this. That is 100% fine if you prefer this clean approach. But more of what I'm gonna be covering today are my darker photos, uh, the photos that are a bit more magical and mysterious, and the photos that consist of a lot of individual layers. And most of these photos, you'll notice, some of them don't actually have my products in them, and that's because these are teaser photos, which are essential before you release a new product line. You don't want to show your fans and followers too much of what you've been up to, but you want to show just enough that it gets them super duper excited and freaking out to know what this new collection is. And then from there, once you have their attention, you can link them to a Facebook group where you will have them collected or to an email list or both, um, which works equally as well. You can learn a lot more about that in some of my previous videos. So be sure to also check out my channel if you have any more questions about fanatical fans. I do have a video completely revolving around fanatical fans that I will also link down below. But keeping the video focused around creating these marketing ads, we are not going to talk about the actual elements of where you're going to put your people once you, you know, hook them. What we really want to focus on is creating the ads themselves. So after you take a few photos of your product, I recommend hopping on to a free stock photo site. There are hundreds, um, but I personally use pexels.com. You can find pretty much photos for anything. They have thousands and thousands of different photos that you can use for free. And this is where we're gonna be um, getting all of the photos today that we're using for our layering process during the uh, marketing photos that I'm going to be creating for my own business today. So starting out, I'm gonna hop onto iPicky and I'm going to quickly upload a photo of one of my products that we are going to use as the base for a couple marketing images that we are going to be coming up with today. So starting out, I'm going to click edit a photo and I'm gonna go into this folder of stock images that I've collected along with photos of my own products. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see, what photo should we use? Um, I'm gonna use this one to start. 
So opening this photo up into the editor, I'm sure by now you guys probably already know how to edit photos if you followed my iPicky training series. So I'm just going to very quickly edit this one. Um, the goal is to get this on a completely black background for the editing style that I'm going to be doing uh, for this particular photo. So what I'm going to do is go into exposure and I'm going to manually turn the shadows down all the way. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to click on my manual brush, click reverse effect, and then I'm going to pencil in those dark shadows with my manual brush. Keeping in mind that you will need to change your brush size and the brush hardness several times. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I do see a little spot right here that I need to fix. So I'm going to go down into draw and just drag this to a black brush and pencil that spot in. Here's another small spot. You basically just wanna make sure that your background is completely one color, whether it be black or white. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is Go back up. I'm going to go into exposure again and turn up the highlights on my product itself uh, slightly. That way it kind of brings out the product. And then I am also going to go in, because this is a silver product and I photographed it next to my brick house, which is red, you can see a lot of discoloration in the product from the reflection. So I'm gonna go into hue and saturation and I'm going to turn the saturation down, not all the way because then it looks black and white but just slightly. But I don't want that saturation to disappear from my beautiful gemstone, so I'm going to go in with, um, you can either pencil in the color manually or you can click reverse effect and get rid of the color that way. But for this, I'm just going to pencil the color in Okay, so the very last thing that I'm going to do is go in and sharpen this product a little bit. It just kind of uh, makes it look a little bit bolder and click apply. All right, so now we have a teaser of a product. You can't really tell um, what it is all the way. And the way that we're going to use this is we are going to layer it onto another image that we're going to create. So this entire process is going to consist of a lot of layers and you can find all of your layers on um, pexels.com. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And now I'm gonna be choosing the marketing image that we are going to use as our base for this photo. Um, I found this photo of a girl that I really like I think that that would be a good one to use because I, I want to use the girl and um, maybe this wolf and then my wolf uh, key. So we'll start with this girl. And I chose this image because this photo really, I think, reflects my target market. Um, you should always try to reflect your own target market when you're choosing images of people from Pexels. So try to aim for somebody who would be your ideal customer. Um, my customers tend to be, you know, more around the uh, gothic crowd. So I thought that this was a great image that my personal target market will connect with. So starting out, um, I'm going to, let's see. I want this photo to be really like wintry. Now keep in mind guys, I, I'm editing this in real time. So I'm learning with you um, and what I'm doing will actually be posted to my site. So this isn't like mapped out ahead of time. I'm just experimenting and you guys just happen to get to watch that. So um, I think since I want this to be a really crisp, cold and mysterious like wintry photo, I think I'm gonna leave this nice blue hue to it. Um, but if for some reason you didn't like that hue, you can always change it like this. And then you can go in with a manual brush and, you know, erase everything that isn't the subject like that. But we're not going to do that. I really like this blue hue. So the next thing that I want to do is go into textures. 
and you're going to you can look through some of their textures they've got a lot um and you can apply them in all different ways but i don't really like any of their textures um so i'm going to use my own which you can upload tons of textures from pexels um basically anything can be a texture for example here is a snow texture i use it quite frequently and you can lay it right over top of your photo using um, lighten you can use screen and you can use add i think i'll use lighten and then i'll you can go in and actually get rid of the uh, areas that are too much or i don't like these really big like close to the camera snowflakes you can go in and erase some of the uh, snowflakes i'm gonna go ahead and cancel that though because i don't want to add a layer like that just yet um, instead, because I really want to do a wolf, like in the background, and then have the key layered over top of the entire image. So I'm going to upload a texture, and here's a cool wolf that I found on uh, Pexels. So I'm going to go into this blend mode and choose a good blend for the wolf. A lot of different good ones that I like. Um... I think I like this one the most. And then you can increase the fade on it if you just kind of want the wolf or whatever your subject is blurred in the background and you can increase it. Um, for this one, I'm gonna increase it all the way, but I'm also going to go in and erase with this manual brush. That way there isn't a lot of, uh, you know, the, the background image of that wolf covering up and masking my girl because ultimately I want it to look like the wolf is standing behind my girl. Okay, so I have that applied. One more time, I'm gonna scroll through these and see if there are any that I like more. That's cool, that looks very ghostly. You can look through all the different options. I'm still pretty set on overlay though, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that one. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, so um, next layer. I think I'm going to go ahead and layer on my key. So to do that, because I took a photo of my key on a black background, I can pull that image and we're gonna go into this layering tab and I'm just gonna pull the image of that key on the black background. So now we can you know, apply it right to our photo. And then we wanna get rid of the black background so we only see the key. So we're gonna go up through these options and you're going to want to either choose lighten or screen. Um, it doesn't really matter which. I think I like the way that lightened looked a little bit more. And then for this product, I'm just going to kind of drag it into my photo somewhere. I'm not quite sure where I want to put it yet. And ultimately what I want to do is blur out the product so much that you can't really see um, a whole lot of what it is, but enough that you know that it's a piece of jewelry. Now one negative thing is that when you go into this, the layering tab as opposed to this uh, textures tab and you're dragging the image onto your photo, there's no way to go in with a manual brush and delete. Like I would like to go in and delete this wing where it's going over the wolf's eye. Um, you can do an effects mask where you're cutting the image out slightly and you can kind of cut areas out that you don't want. So if I were to cut this piece off, see how the wing is now cut off. Um, and sometimes you can make it look smooth, kind of how I have here, by contouring it to the wolf's face. But this takes a lot of practice and honestly, sometimes it gets pretty difficult. Um, another thing that you can do if you go in and edit your mask is you can feather it a little bit. That way it looks softer and it gives you a bit more of a soft transition and blurs it out. That's another good option. So 
So just kind of playing with it. I really like how it sits right here. Um, I think that this looks good. I don't know if I want it blurred that much. Well, yeah. Because I don't want him to see too much. This is like a, a teaser, you know. I really want that wolf's eye to show. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this. Looking good. I see that there is a sharp edge here from the edge of the photo. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into exposure and turn the shadows down. Use my manual brush. Click reverse effect. And I'm going to go in and uh, kind of fade in that area so there's a smoother transition and I'm going to click apply. Now I want this to look very snowy and thankfully iPicky actually has an option under photo effects which you can find a lot of great effects. Um, my favorite uh, filter is Anthony and it gives a really neat hue to your photos but I don't think it really works with this one. Um, there's a lot of different ones that you can play with but for the photo that I'm going for I really want it to look cold and crisp. So going through all of these different photo effects, the one I'm looking for is called snow. Here it is. So I'm gonna click on this. Now a few things I don't like about snow. For one, I hate this border. Um, I think that having a big frame around your photos is really cheesy. So I definitely recommend going down here and turning that border down all the way. That way you don't have that border. Um, but then you can also play with the snow size. You can give yourself uh, a lot of snow or <laughs> Big chunks of snow. Usually right in the middle is pretty good. And then you can increase and decrease the coldness, which is going to change the hue of the photo, make it a little bit more blue. And you can fade out the snow so it isn't so, um, so loud, I guess you could say. And another thing that I like to do is go in with that manual brush and delete uh, some of that snow from your subject's face if you're using a person. So here's a great way to create an easy marketing photo. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of get rid of that snow because I want to add my own. Um, that's just an option if you're not really good with textures or you can't find a texture that you want. For me, I'm going to use my own textures. So I've got a lot more different textures that you can play with. You can find all of these on uh, iPicky or I mean on Pexels. <laughs> And some of them are just really cool and you never, I guess you don't expect some of them to look good until you play with them. So I recommend playing with all different textures, try different things. Um, they've got a lot of different light leak effect effects, which are these like little light dots. I think that they look kind of cool, especially for like holiday marketing, not particularly for the product that I'm trying to focus on right now, but you get the point. Okay, so now I've got some snow on here. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of it because I don't want too much snow covering up my, uh, my product or my model. Just a little bit. I think that this is a very mysterious and enticing photo, and I think that most of you can agree, especially for my target market. This is something that they're very into. But like I said, we'll do an example of something a little bit more simple that you guys can connect with a little bit more. So another marketing hack that you can use for Facebook and Instagram, um, a lot of people recommend using a square image. What a square image does on social media is it blows up to the exact size needed to fit a screen. So when you're using a big uh, horizontal photo like this, the image is actually smaller than if you were to cut it into a square. I'm sure that a lot of you might notice that a lot of the uh, Facebook videos now are showing up as squares as opposed to horizontal images. And that's because they fit better on the screen and marketers are realizing that those square images, because they're taking up more screen, sp uh, screen space, both on mobile and on desktop, it's actually more effective to use those squared off images. So I'm gonna crop my image in iPicky and there's no real ideal size for this as long as you're making sure that the res resolution is good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crop it right about here. Looks good. Maybe over just a little bit. Wow. I love that. So fierce and mysterious. Okay, so um, next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of text. And this is going to be a teaser. Um, 
for my upcoming launch. So I don't want to say that I'm showcasing a product. I'm just showcasing the collection as a whole. So I'm going to go into text right here in the layering tab. And then they've got a lot of different fonts that you can choose from, but your biggest mistake would be choosing something ridiculous. Try to avoid using a bunch of fonts. In fact, for all of your marketing, you should ideally be sticking to one or two very consistent fonts throughout all of your marketing. Um, and there are tons of different fonts that will fit your brand per personality. But for my brand, I personally just use Times New Roman. I feel like it fits my image. It's very clean and it's easy to read. Usually when it comes to your marketing photos, simple is always best. So what I'm gonna do is add a mysterious tagline to this photo that's really gonna get the gears in their mind thinking. So here's the idea that I'm thinking. I, I would like this to say when she's too fierce for the average gift, um, but this is taking up a lot of real estate, all, the, all of these words. So I might condense that if I can't get it to fit, um, but this is just the idea that I had in my head. So I'm gonna change the color of this. And I always use white and gray because white, gray, and black are my branding colors. And I really like how these look. I might do a touch lighter on gray. I do this down in gradient fill. You can change the color. And I really want this to stand out over this gemstone. And I'll probably fade it a bit when she's I really want fierce to stand out so I'm not gonna fade fierce. Okay, um, and now I'm gonna play with these a little bit. Get rid of all these. I always kinda like to drag out a layout of how I want it over to the side and it kind of helps me personally. One of those weird things that I do. So I'm gonna kind of play with the sizing on everything. I really want the word fierce to be what stands out. That's why I faded everything else. And when you create marketing photos with a little bit of text, it's good to have a, a visual flow. So notice how my text is kind of leaning this way. Um, it's a lot more pleasing to the eye. And when you get a piece where you want it, be sure to lock it down that way, because I'm trying to grab two and I keep grabbing everything else. I might increase the size of two. When she's too fierce for the average gift. I really like that. And I think this gets my message across really well. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little divider. I, I wish I could remember where I got this divider. Um, offhand, I can't remember. But I will tell you that in iPicky, there are tons down in ornaments. You have tons of different dividers that you can use. Um, this one right here is my personal favorite. I use it quite frequently. And that's a great way to make a certain word stand out. Okay, I really like this so far. I think that this looks good. Um, I'm gonna apply it, but there's one more thing that I want to do. Usually when you have a human in your photos, um, or an animal actually, you really want to make their eyes stand out because humans have a natural tendency to be attracted to eyeballs. Um, and I like to go into this little head option and go into the option called Eyes Bright and decrease that brush size a lot. And then go in and kind of uh, Focus on outlining the actual light in the person's eyes. Like, do you see her, the actual like little glimmer in her eye? That's what I really want to highlight. 
You can also go in and uh, touch up eyelashes and eye makeup. That all works really great with this feature too. Yeah, her eyes look a lot more bold. All right, I really like this one, so I'm going to save it. So now I would like to do an example of something that is a little bit more neutral, um, maybe for holiday marketing. And you can find a lot of really great holiday marketing photos on uh, Pexels, but you can also create your own. Here's just one that I found on Pexels though, that way I don't need to shoot my own scene creator image for the holidays. Obviously using the scene creator video that I have linked down in the playlist below, you can create photos like this for yourself, but we're just gonna use one that I found on Pexels and you guys could totally go and find this same image. Um, one thing that I do wanna do is I noticed that this isn't completely white, it's kind of an off-white. So I'm gonna go into exposure and crank up these highlights quite a bit. That way we're making sure that our canvas is completely white. Once again, if you're completely lost, you will learn how to do all of this in the scene creator video that is linked below. So be sure to watch that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. And I didn't focus too much on this area because keeping in mind, we will be cropping this down into a square, which isn't good when you're doing a lot of layers. But for this photo, I don't think I'm gonna be doing very many layers. So go ahead and apply this. All right, we have a really cool marketing photo already. Um, now we just need to add products to it. So you could flip this around. I don't know. I'm, I can't decide if I like it off to the side more because this takes up a lot of real estate. I might do it towards the top. We'll play with it on the top. Now, using that same tactic that I taught you in Scene Creator, we're going to go into our uh, layering tab and I'm just gonna pull a photo of one of my products on a white background. So this is just the first one that I could find. It's a little football player key, um, which I actually released for fall, but whatever, it's just something easy that I could grab. <laughs> Now, the next thing that we're gonna do, just like you learned in the scene creator, because this is not a PNG image, you're going to need to go in to this little uh, options tab up here for the photo and choose an option that will only show the product. So I like multiply and you can also use darken for that. And the product has to be on a white background and you have to be applying it to a white background for this to work. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of find a good spot to put this so it looks natural. Oh, so cute. Now, if I were only focusing on this product, I would increase the size by quite a bit. Or, you know, you could use this for a number of products. In fact, I'm sure I could find something on Google Images that we could even use. So just trying to think of something else that I could use, I was just kind of on Google Images, which I don't recommend using because most uh, Google Images are not free. But just for the sake of finding any any example of a product on white, um, I went ahead and pulled a just random photo of a dream catcher because I feel like this would be an easy one just to stick on this background. So I'm gonna pull it on here. Once again, you're going to going to want to go into multiply so the product is standing on its own without that white background and then you know you can drag it wherever which this I guess this isn't the best canvas for this particular product this would probably look best with maybe some cookies um, maybe you create handmade soap something like that this photo isn't really working with it but you get the point you can you can see exactly what I'm talking about where you can drag any photo as long as it's on white um, onto this white blank canvas. So going back into stock photos one more time, I'm gonna give you guys another example, hooray! So here I found a really beautiful clean image that you could easily, because it's so light, you could easily get one of your own products into it. So I'm gonna go into, let's see, I'm gonna go into layering and I'm going to pull, um, maybe the stream catcher would work for this actually. We'll go ahead and lay it on with multiply looks better. Once again, obviously you have to play with it. This probably isn't the best product to be, you know, using for this image, but you, because the background is so light, you can pretty much get away with sticking anything on it. Here's a few examples that I did during our marketing scene creator. Um, so for example, because this is, this is just a random pair of my glasses that I photographed. 
but I can easily take this and put it onto this background because, you know, there's a white background and I can kind of lay these here. I might even fade them out just slightly so they look a little bit more natural laying there. I could do the same with this leaf. I think that looks really good. Here's one of my keys showing that yes, you can absolutely do this with jewelry. <laughs> wow, that looks really good. This looks like a marketing photo that I would use. So with this in mind, now that I see how wonderful and clean this looks, I didn't realize how good this photo looked until I like really started playing with it. So I actually think I might use this for my marketing. Um, I have some cookies here. These were from Renee Christine's uh, scene creator that she made, but that offer isn't available anymore. Um, I just wanted to point that out that this is a PNG image from her. But I'm basically just gonna play with a couple of my photos because I really like how this turned out. And I think that this might be a marketing ad that I would like to use uh, in the future. Okay, I really like how this looks. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and crop it into my square. Oh, that's so pretty, I love that. Now I'm gonna go into my uh, layering tab and add some text. And remember, I always use the same font. Okay, so this is another really cool marketing photo. I absolutely love this one, and I'm probably going to post this one right away because photos like this, where you're focusing less on the product and more on something that is shareable, uh, for example, I often use quotes that people will connect with, um, and those are really great for going viral because people will share them, not really, thinking about the fact that they're marketing for you. So when they share it and all their friends see this, you know, I'm not throwing a product in their face, but they read this and they like it and they think the photo is pretty, so they share it. All of their friends see it as well. And then their friends who might see these products, you know, in the photo will look at the photo description and realize, man, maybe I should check this out. So this is just another really awesome example. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this and save it. And this is a photo that I would upload to Instagram, Facebook. A photo like this is honestly good for anything. Okay guys, so I actually just asked our Althas. We have Elizabeth Ruth and Linda Sue have donated some photos. That way I can actually use some different type of products aside from my own so you guys can get a better idea of how to display them. Um, so I'm gonna go back into my photo library and go ahead and upload a new canvas to use. Let me see here. So first thing, I'm probably gonna maybe try out this white wood background because I'd really like to do um, Elizabeth's product. And this might be light enough, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna upload her product photo I'll go ahead and upload um, both of them. Okay, so here is another example that I'm just kind of playing with. Um, and these images right here came from Renee Christine's uh, marketing scene creator. Obviously you can create your own if you know how to do that if you watch the scene creator video. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and crop this into a square and apply it. Oh, that's so cute. And you could obviously add some text to this. Um, I'm just gonna put something random on here. 
Okay, so like I said, I used a couple pieces from Renee Christine's um, scene creator, but obviously if you guys know how to make your own or if you followed my scene creator video, you can learn how to create these. Um, you just won't be able to layer them as easily as PNG files. But this is just a super duper easy example of a photo that was initially on a white background. Uh, I played with it enough and dragged it into a decent position on this like light wood that I was able to get it so it wasn't showing um, the lines through the product itself from the wood. You can see a little bit in the eye, but I don't think that it's anything that's going to be distracting for an actual marketing photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this so I can show it off to Elizabeth Ruth afterwards, and her shop is going to be linked down below. So the next photo that we're going to be doing is a really cool um, bangle by Primitive Riches, and this is a business that I've shopped with before. Um, so I, I absolutely love her products, but I know that she kind of struggles with her marketing photos. So we're going to help her out a little bit and let's see her she really likes wolves and the really natural themes so let's look through some wolf photos i guess there aren't that many maybe we should try winter instead of wolf i like this image because it's it's white we can get away with adding a product to it so with linda's cuff i i really just want to try something like i i am honestly just experimenting um with an idea I think I found the one that I like, um, but it's taken kind of in a summer scene, so I'm gonna need to do some editing to it. And it's this wolf right here with just the eyes, but you can see a lot of greenery, so I'm gonna really need to play with this. Um, one thing that I'm gonna do to make it less harsh, that way we're actually able to see more of this background, is I might ignore the texture color, making this a black and white image. Um, and then I'm just gonna play around with the different that one doesn't look too bad. I really like this option called hard light. So now what I wanna do is go in and erase some of the extra noise. Um, basically a lot of what's going on down here. I want this area here to be the primary focus of where the wolf's face is. So all of this other stuff I think can be deleted out. I'm gonna go in with a manual brush and get rid of all of that. Okay, so next thing that I really wanna do is go in and get this image cropped. That way I'm not um, tempted to use anything that's not a square. We'll go ahead and add her product to the photo. Once again, going in just like we did in the scene creator, we're gonna add it in with uh, either multiply or darken. I think darken looks best for this one. And now that I have this added, I see that her uh, where she's cut it, there's a lot of harsh lines. So I actually might go in because I don't like how harsh it looks. It looks very out of place sitting here. Um, it doesn't look very natural. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. And to fix that problem, I'm gonna go into the exposure tab, increase this exposure a bit, but then go in with my manual brush and kind of blend this into the white background a little bit more easily. It just, it makes it look a lot less harsh uh, with the background that we're currently working with. And I would like to add a little bit of exposure to this side of the product because I feel like it's very dark compared to all what we've got going on around it. Like all of this crazy scene, I feel like down here could be a little bit brighter. I really like this so far, but I feel like it's missing something and I'm not quite sure what. And that happens to me very often. <laughs> I look at a photo and I think, man, there's just something that it's missing. Hmm. This is really pretty. I really like the purple and blue. And then I can go through and delete some of this. Since I'm in textures, I can delete some of it off of the product itself. So now I'm gonna go in and decrease this brush strength by a lot, but increase my brush size and kind of gently pencil in some of these areas.
So obviously I don't have the exact fonts that Primitive Riches uses, um, but I'm just gonna think of a random little slogan to throw in this image just so we have something up. Um, something that I might use. Okay, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking that it's missing something. I really like how it turned out, but I feel like there's just not enough here. Um, so, and this is going to happen probably a million times to you if you're anything like me. So, I think what I would like to do is go back into this photo of the exact same cuff um, go in to probably darken and I'm gonna fade it out a lot because I really like this texture and I want to show it off more um, but I feel like it, I'm not showing it off as much as I should be so I'm gonna try to incorporate it into the photo more Okay, now I've got these beads shown off a lot more, which I like. Um, I'm still not 100% happy with it. So maybe I'll add in her logo. I think that that would tie this all together. So I went ahead and pulled her logo right from her shop and I'm gonna go into the layering tab and add it to the photo using the exact same lighten and darken technique. Okay, I like this a lot more. I think that this turned out really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know that we moved fast and it is very confusing. It takes a long time to grasp. And you know, with over <laughs> probably a million different techniques that you can use in iPicky, there's obviously going to be a million different scenarios where you could use all of these features and I cannot possibly go over all of them. But what I hope today did was plant a seed in your mind that you don't need to have Photoshop to create beautiful marketing or marketing photos. Um, and you don't need to pay a designer to make them. It just takes a lot of practice. And hopefully with these easy little tools that I've given you and a few examples, you can create your very own beautiful holiday marketing photos. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like. And most importantly, if you need more help on Etsy, down below, I'm going to have a link to join the Handmade Alpha Facebook group. This is a community of all of our Handmade Alpha followers where we base all of our teachings on the trainings that I teach on YouTube using the exact same proven methods that have made me successful in my own Etsy business. Our community now has over a thousand members, which I am so excited to announce. All right, guys, thanks again so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.